number 23 in the Black Label range from 101 Films comes the last broadcast and I kind of like this snazzy new edition without the title on it, just a nice artwork at the front to highlight the movie. Uh, the last broadcast is a movie that I discovered way back uh, in the late 90s, just before uh, Blair Witch Project kind of landed. I, I think I saw it on, I think it was Movie Drome or, or some programme similar to that and it was a really weird watch. I mean, a time before found footage movies, this was a kind of forefather to that, um, which involved a story, a true crime story about a small cable network channel, two uh, people who recruit an assistant, um, a couple of other people, they go into the woods in search of the Jersey Devil, and only one survives coming out, being sentenced to death, he proclaims his innocence, and we have this investigative journalist digging into what actually happened here. And it's one of those movies that starts off with very firm footing and near the end starts to come into something much, much more, which I really kind of enjoy about it. I'd come to this project with many of the same assumptions that you have concerning the Jersey Devil murders. Throughout the film, we've got the, the conversational aspect of uh, the investigator who's came after the fact who's digging up material, who's looking at old videos, who's constructing the history of what happened with everyone here. And we're seeing it through his eyes as he's delving into this mystery and slowly unravelling what's actually happening, bringing up new clues and constantly keeping the mystery fresh in our heads as we, the viewer, are trying to work out what happened. At this time, we have arrested Jim Seward for the murders of Ryan Clacken and Locust Wheeler. And although looking at it now, it is definitely rough around the edges, when you look back at the time it came out, it was really cutting edge with a lot of the things they were doing. Um, because it, 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 the filmmaking in general, out with the story, um, it's really well constructed. It's really well put together. It's got some really fun touches. Um, the degrading of certain material, the way the transitions, the, the kind of effects that it goes for, it all works really well. But the heart of this one is all about the story. The story that is driving the movie forward, the mystery at the heart of it. And even knowing the mystery after the fact, it still doesn't detract from the kind of fun that you have watching this. When the court case came up, it was, I mean, it, the media frenzy was, you know, hysterical. I mean, I couldn't, I felt like they were, you know, everybody, somebody was watching me like every minute. Watching everything unravel, knowing the second time round exactly what's playing out doesn't take away any of the enjoyment. In fact, it gives you a different aspect into the movie that's just as enjoyable. And I love what these filmmakers did. The fact that they, they just created something out of nothing, um, but anchored it with some good performances, some not so great performances, some really nice uh, filming and editing techniques and creating something that is a staple of found footage movies. And even looking back at it now, there's a sense of nostalgia and fun watching this one. And although some of the things that they do have dated dramatically, it doesn't take away because you've got a solid story at the heart of it about what happened to these people in the woods. As the tape is reassembled by Shelley, it becomes apparent that some sections are rather viewable. I'm having to keep the last broadcast particularly vague because I think it's something that you really should delve into. You should go into knowing as little as possible. The synopsis is all you need about it. This movie is, is hangs on the mystery and the way the film is constructed and the likability of a lot of the characters within it, or not so much. And like I said, there are some great things uh, about this film and some not so great things. There is an amateurish effect to some of the acting at certain points, but it doesn't overpower the movie. It doesn't distract from the movie at any point. And uh, like I said, there's there's some key performances here, particularly the, the investigative journalist who's digging up all the clues and material. His performance is particularly nice for the most part. This is one of the stops that the guys have made on their way to the Pine Barrens. I know this because of the extensive documentary footage that they've taken of this place. As for a found footage movie, there are moments near the end where I feel as though it kind of loses um, the found footage capabilities, where there's things going, where I'm wondering how that has been captured 
But again, by that point, I'm so much into the story that it barely registers. Now, this is one heck of a stacked release from 101 film, so we're going to jump into the disc and have a look at some of the extras that are on show here. So here we are in the disc for the last broadcast. I'm going to go down to the extras and have a look to see what 101 Films has on offer here. We have a new broadcast, which is interviews with the co-directors. Um, this is 31 minutes in length. It's really interesting. We get to get a retrospective look back on the sort of legacy of the last broadcast. We then have a commentary with the directors from 1999 and a second commentary from from 2006, which is nice to see what's happened in uh, the six, seven years in between. I would love to have had one now, uh, just to have a, a even more sort of further distance and look upon it. We have three behind the scenes featurettes here. Uh, much in keeping with the movie, these are kind of shot on the uh, sort of cameras, uh, handheld, very kind of rough around the edges, but interesting enough. This one, the production, is around seven and a half minutes. The post-production is four and a half minutes and the distribution is around six minutes in length. The exclusive interviews um, again are kind of behind the scenes stuff. It's 15 minutes in length. Again some of the information is covered over the commentaries and some of the other uh, extras but it's, it's interesting enough. Clips from Fact or Fiction is the fictional show within the movie here and this is 15 minutes as well. We've got Jim Seward, uh, Alive and Well, uh, just performing two songs acoustically. They're nice enough, it's just a, an interesting little addition. Uh, we've got Lucas, What Really Happened, uh, which is a five minute little uh, additional as driving kind of talking uh, piece. And we have Gallery of Gore, which is two minutes of various images from the movie. The trailer, which is two and a half minutes. And that rounds out the disc for the last broadcast. So there we have it. The last broadcast is a fantastic movie uh, for fans of found footage. It is a precursor that you should have seen. If you're just curious about something that came out at the time, definitely worth checking out. The extras alone are substantial and time consuming to go through. But enjoyable to do so. So I'd love to know your thoughts on this release. If you've seen it, your memories of watching this or discovering it way back in the day would be fantastic to hear about. As always, there's more content up here that you can see more of my videos if you think I deserve it. Hit this video uh, with a like. Just this little button down there takes a second to press and it's fantastic for me. Share or subscribe uh, if you haven't done so already. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can join the Patreon or the membership program. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.